so good morning friends today we are having our ethics integrity aptitude eia lecture number 5 we are covering our chapter 2 mentioned in the syllabus and uh, in the chapter 2 we have seen the prime focus is on human values as we saw the prime focus of chapter number 1 was human ethics the interface human ethics has with our human actions ethics and human interface the interface ethics ethical principles ethical conduct has with the human interface that human action tendency the action and behavior we do in our public conduct and our private conduct in our public relationships and our private relationships so in essence what actually the chapter number 1 and 2 suggest as depicted in the syllabus is the chapter number 1 was regarding your human action ethics ethics having an interface with the human behavior and when we are studying it as aspirants of civil services examination then what we are actually looking at is your behavior in private relationships as common citizens of this country and your behavior in public relationships as civil servant public servant as i say civil servant public servant private relationship and public servant what are your conduct how these conducts are affected and how these conducts influence the ethics that was the essence of chapter number 1 and as i told you when you are writing the examination your knowledge of ethics will not be checked what will be checked is your core ethics your ethics not what you have learned through others but what you have ingrained internalized so a basic focus should be on internalizing these ethics as we studied in last uh, chapter what should be the ethical conduct given by a british nolan committee so that honesty integrity openness objectivity selflessness all these things you should try to imbibe in your personality imbibe in your personal conduct as well as public conduct when you try doing this you will realize that not only for your sake the learning will be much more easier it will be easier for you to write the answers in the examination with much more conviction likewise in the chapter number 2 which we are dealing right now the essence of the chapter is the values and when the syllabus is talking about values human values again not the human values which you have learned but what human values which you have internalized and imbibed in your behavior that is why in the syllabus it is mentioned that values given by great leaders reformers and administrators this syllabus or uh, this chapter these things which are mentioned in the self, uh, syllabus they are indicative in nature that is they are not the sufficient stores of values that is you will not be able to learn all the values from these sources only there are other sources as well there is a innumerable innumerable enormous list of books 
which you can study to learn these values but the idea is the thing is even if you go through all these things and even if you go through one book as uh, some of you are asking regarding uh, reference book as far as lexicon is concerned lexicon is quite out of scene now lexicon is of no use now lexicon was useful only in the initial years when the ethics paper was introduced from 2013 till 2015 it was useful one or two years when the examiner was asking only the basic ideas the concepts and all they were asking you the definitions and concept now they are not asking the definition and concepts so the thing is that you should know the definition of course more uh, focus is on understanding the significance of the terms and the application part which we are covering we are preparing ourselves for any changes also any eventuality as you see just giving you an example as has been the case in uh, our uh, psychology test series and psychology classes many students were uh, approaching me sir this is far more a departure from what we have learned uh, the kind of paper which we are coming in uh, which are coming in the upsc the thing is that i have changed the pattern in every test there are 25 markers also there are 30 markers 20 markers all because see once you have hold over the concepts you will be able to do this maneuvering these things can be done and if there are changes in the patterns in the test when you are writing new questions are given like we are doing in our prelims test series as well you will be prepared to face any eventuality you will be more alert in the examination you will have a greater command over concepts and you will be able to deliver more rather than going through a fixed syllabus going through a fixed set of notes which creates lots of problems not only in the life of the examiner who is checking the answer sheet seeing all the examples same everybody giving the same example now if everyone gives the same example how will the examiner give you more marks so in our ethics tests also and in our classes also we keep changing the things so that you are more aware you are well prepared for any kind of eventuality like a warrior so lexicon was for these years now many books are there in the market and i have first hand experience of reading many of these books what i realized again unfortunately the focus is on giving voluminous content you see what happens you should have an insight over these things the thing is that when a person approaches a publisher or a publisher approaches an author what happens there they are looking for they are actually looking for greater volume of content the voluminous it is the better it is why because people those who are buying it for 500 rupees they will say okay the book should be of 500 pages they don't realize that by paying 500 rupees they are actually making their life hell 500 page book not required at all as far as ethics paper is concerned and for that matter have you seen if you see my psychology paper one notes precise notes i cannot give the complete notes because of my uh, agreement with the publishers because certain other things will be included in that but i have given a precise note which is of 100 pages around 100 pages paper one complete right now what is happening in the market in the market 2500 pages only for paper one that to class notes class notes handwritten notes and the kind of handwriting which is available in the market nobody can see what is written there so the great disservice being done to to, to the students they are being misled so the focus is on content giving lots of content now as a newcomer or even if you have written one or two mains as well you will not realize that reading lots of content is not going to create any change in your output in your result in your ranks the idea is to apply idea is to understand the concepts that is why it is 
completely futile to go through any book you better idea is that be watchful how i will tell you i was watching as a, <clears throat> a reel sent by uh, one of you only in that reel in, in on instagram what is being shown there is an ias deepak rawat of uttarakhand cadre this man is quite popular as far as social media is concerned or maybe seen more i don't know about the popularity of the person he is seen going everywhere with his cameraman his crew as bollywood stars go with their camera people models and actresses and actors youtubers everybody one of my friend who was preparing for upsc earlier she left the preparation after two attempts she became a influencer she is very successful but then i see uh, she keeps on sending the content there is nothing no no harm in that that's also a good profession and she is very successful she also carries her cameraman crew <clears throat> likewise these ias officers many of them it's not the trend of today it has been the trend since long there was another ias known as b chandrakala in up what these people were doing whenever they went to some uh, school whenever they were inspecting any organization under the government of india initiative or government of the state they carry the cameraman they used to scold their subordinates on camera they are showing as if they are the most honest people in this world same the case with the deepak rawat <coughs> scolding everybody showing as if they are doing everything now this trend of ias officers or even ips doing this is completely unethical i'll tell you why one because the civil servant should be bound by this principle anonymity that is whatever you are doing you have to be anonymous that is you are not supposed to come in front of the camera that is not your job if there is something wrong which is going on <clears throat> you can bring the press to record everything suppose you suddenly got a tip from your team members regarding any illegal activity going on at a place you have a flying squad with yourself you go there reach there with the flying squad you call the press also but only those people who don't reveal this news in the media because if it is revealed in the media the concerned person will also know and he or she will flee from the place you go there you call the press people they record everything everything is recorded and kept as a record because when you go to the court you have you will have to prove that why you have caught the person that is another thing but carrying your cameraman carrying the crew everywhere to record your service just to gain popularity is a disservice likewise there was one uh, ias officer abhishek singh recently he resigned earlier he was suspended during gujarat elections by elections he was made observer he clicked a photo in front of the car in front of the car he clicked the photo put it on the social media now he is from up cadre the yogi government government of the up they served him a notice and suspended him for this misconduct because it, this does not come under civil service conduct after some time he resigned <coughs> what happened with b chandrakala <coughs> she was <coughs> under the scanner of vigilance department 
and it was found that she has done a huge corruption there were eight places at which she had stored money mr rawat has not come under any scanner till now but let me tell you one thing either today or a few days later he will also be under scanner either under a correct case as b chandrakala was under the scanner or a false case there be, that also happens i know one of the uh, ias officer who is in orissa cadre who you should talk to him is very senior he was uh, after 13 years of his service he was caught for taking bribe of 50000 which is completely unbelievable given the kind of track record he has he was alleged that he has it was alleged that he has taken 50000 bribe there is an is officer who was there in the coal who was coal department when the coal scam coal scam came out in 2013 when upa government was going at that point of time this is officer coal secretary probably he was caught because he was following all the rules there is no charge of corruption against him so these things happen you know why because once you come out in front of the camera you expose yourself and for your internal peace also for your mental peace also i advise that it's better to remain behind the camera not in front of the camera or don't be obsessed about the camera at, at all because see even if you have great a huge amount of wealth and if you keep on showing i have this i have bought this car i have bought this house you are unnecessarily exposing yourself to one the vigilance department to the evil eye better idea is to be rich and remain private be rich and remain private you see so just giving you an example ab dekho aap you see there is a gujarati marwadi people so rich if you go to their house <coughs> or you call them they will come on scooter bajaj scooter the old one now only if you ride that scooter but you see this simplicity one thing not showing off you go to any punjabi having alto not a bad car anybody can have uh, any car not not bad nothing bad about that alto 800 but showing it as if they have that got that uh, audi in their house show off lots of show off show off ex- exposes you towards a uh, evil eye show off exposes you especially if you are in a public service civil servant should avoid this anonymity one principle which we have learned in your nolan committee also and ethics in governance fourth report also these principles are not philosophy not impractical they are practical principles recently a jharkhand cadre senior is officer senior jharkhand cadre is a lady she was caught she was in relationship with a business man and these two became part of a huge corruption done under the state government after 20 25 years of service now they are in jail in uh, west bengal a senior is along with his son they hanged themselves out of shame because 
after so many years of service their corruption was caught the son also reeling under the pressure hanged themselves see these principles are not just to be studied just to be read but imbibed and they will help you to live a very good life and uh, tell me, uh, let me tell you one thing if you want to live a peaceful life better idea is to choose ifs indian foreign service live a royal life stay away from these politicians most of them who are illiterate and stupid yes if you have that tendency of shrugging your uh, shoulders with these kind of people then you better choose ias and ips otherwise this is a better service some people choose irs indian revenue service also over these services because they want to have a peaceful life so the principle which mr rawat is violating again and again is anonymity and how will you write these things in the exam not taking anybody's name you will just give an indirect reference one of the ias officers in uttarakhand was caught or rather was came under the i o people because he was carrying his cameraman everywhere so violating the principle of anonymity secondly when you are going and scolding your people everywhere everywhere you are going and scolding your subordinates or the people concerned with various departments what is happening there you are exposing to the world this is how i treat with my subordinates this is how the subordinates are treated whether they are corrupt or not whether they have violated any duty or not that is another matter that's a matter of investigation but as a government servant these people also have their rights and you should not expose or you should not violate their life right to life and privacy under article 21 everybody has right to life personal liberty life personal liberty and privacy you are violating that under article 21 you are giving a message to the nation to the budding civil service aspirants to the new civil servants who are coming your juniors you when you got uh, a training in uh, lal bahadur shastri academy lbs after that you will be sent to after some time of training those who are in ias they will be sent ias and ips both ips gets a training in national public npa in hyderabad they get a training in national police academy sardar vallabhbhai patel national police academy hyderabad after that they go to their respective districts after one year of training here they will go to the respective districts in the district they will gain some experience first hand experience under the guidance of already serving dm or already serving sp they again come back to their respective institutions so these kind of training are called sandwich training sandwich like there is a vegetable cheese all these things between two breads likewise between two trainings you are sent into the district and like in sandwich the stuffing is more important likewise the training which you get in the district is more important so <clears throat> what kind of message you are giving to these juniors who are coming to train under you that this is what you should do is this the way to behave no <coughs> and let me tell you what happened with the miss uh, kiran bedi and uh, divya mittal is also exemplary although these people are honest ferocious eloquent you know eloquent 
eloquence is also a very good virtue as you will see in case of abraham lincoln he was quite an eloquent person whatever is there speak in front whatever is there speak with uh, courage confidence so what happened with these people they were also up front they were on camera also divya mittal was shown shouting at uh, department of agriculture scientists the people who are working there in the ministry and department of agriculture and irrigation this is not the way to behave you can call them in your uh, office talk to them one by one deal with the things in a more gracious manner otherwise you know what happens the life becomes very difficult and that is why to solve all these things this paper has been brought so that you understand have a first hand experience and this should have been listen to me very carefully this should have been the duty of all the coaches who are teaching ethics so called coaches that to expose you towards these ideas that this is why you are reading it rather than that what they are doing because many of them they have not studied ethics themselves they were not the aspirant when ethics paper came they they already became quite old they come from that era of 90s where there was an altogether different paper so how would they know about this firstly they should not have been brought to teach ethics at all this is the duty of the coaching institutions secondly they should also not have taken the just to earn money they are doing it so you see what happened in up i'm giving you so many examples so that you understand the essence what happens your conduct and how difficult this service is how difficult this service is on the field when you are preparing it is difficult because you are doing your hard work you are not aware of your results okay that is okay still you have lots of comfort you are under the guidance of your parents teachers coaches friends what will happen after you pass the exam very happy 200 500 people uh, in the crowd when you are when you are called for in the coaching institute a various coaching coachings will call you you might not have taken uh, any course there but even they will call you you go there everybody claps in the training also life is very happy as you can see on instagram many people are putting up their photos now after the training when you go to the ground training of ips so many of my friends and many students students in a junior level and friends in a very higher level so they they share their experience on the ground it's very difficult on the, the ground you are supposed to talk to the common man common people you can't take any action up front unlike the things shown in the bollywood movie singham took out the bullet and fired no it doesn't happen there you have to give account of each and every bullet you cannot just fire upon anybody like this there will be so many cases filed against you or yourself common man you are dealing with very less resources then there will be lots of pressure political pressure pressure from your seniors common people already pressurizing you media now become very active social media everything is getting recorded you do one misconduct in your office you never know who is recording it they will put it up on the youtube they will put it up on instagram it will become viral so to prepare yourself for such eventualities this paper has been brought so that you follow the ethical practical guidelines this thing which these people are doing exposing themselves on camera every now and then is going to affect them a lot there are people who are doing wonderful job peacefully they have transformed the districts like you might be aware about this place in pune it's called pimpri 
పింపిరి చించివాడు పింపిరి దిస్ ప్లేస్ వాజ్ ట్రాన్స్ఫార్మ్డ్ బై ద దెన్ డీసీ దేర్ ఓవర్ డీసీ దిస్ ప్లేస్ వాజ్ కంప్లీట్లీ ట్రాన్స్ఫార్మ్డ్ డిడ్ అ వండర్ఫుల్ జాబ్ there would used to be an ias officer in gujarat anil kumar lakina who brought the single window system that is whatever the concerns of the citizens are that will be dealt at one window you don't need to run from one window to another just to get your things done wonderful thing likewise there are so many ias and ips officers along with the other services they are doing wonderful things in life they are doing well the department is doing well the nation is growing there is no need of any camera if you have this temperament then you will go really far as far as civil services are concerned those who want to gain popularity even if they join politics from bureaucracy they are doomed so this was the essence of what we are studying be observant like this as aditya told me that this is the case how to deal with it okay so we are dealing with the observation part which is very important as far as ethics paper is concerned the chapter 1 told you what ethics you should imbibe in yourself chapter 2 what values you should imbibe in yourself and they are get guiding you the sources also what are the sources we'll deal from where you can gain but firstly let us deal with few important great leaders and great sources from whom from whom you can learn a lot as far as having values are concerned there are certain sources which i'll give you few more we will provide you in uh, the pdf format as a material but again reminding you these matters will not be bulky because that is not required you have to read that again and again i want you to pass not to fail that is why when the courses were going on till march last year i was quite wary i told i'm going if people study till march and or april how will they pass prelims and there are people there are people with temperament those who write the prelims although many of them failed the first attempters most of the first attempters failed because of this tendency not because of their mistake so some of them lost their moral some of them lost their confidence some people don't even have resources to carry it forward for less, next 5 years so whose mistake is this and who can take accountability this is the problem with the coaching institutions you cannot drag your courses till march or april exam is in the may the idea is the preparation should start for prelims in a gradual manner from october end or november itself in a gradual manner you should increase your tempo so we'll learn few things from the great a uh, the greatest uh, preacher the greatest ethical substance the source of the greatest ethical conduct and the value system in the world comes from one of the sermons given in one of the wars the br- biggest war in our mythological belief mahabharat during mahabharat war arjun arjuna was fearful doubtful as far as his own capabilities are concerned how can i fight with my own relatives those who have been my teachers those who have been my elders there came a lesson a set of lessons from none other than lord krishna
in form of Gita, Bhagavad Gita, which is still found to be the best source of ethical, moral, as well as practical conduct to live your life in the best possible manner. So what does Bhagavad Gita preach you, tell you? Although Lord Krishna was just uh, giving few lessons to Arjun to get up and fight, but the whole sermonization became a life truth, became a gospel truth for life, complete life. So what does it teach you briefly? You should lead your life through actions, not inaction. What does it mean? It means that you should do your duty. Suppose you join a department initially. You as an ASP when you are under training, as a trainee ASP, trainee ASP during your probation years, you go to a district, you see that the there is huge corruption in the police department there. People are being subjugated to harshness of police. People are poor. They cannot fight the cases. They cannot hire lawyers. And it is an insensitive approach of the whole police department as far as that district is concerned. Now, a person who is inactive will say, I have to do my training here and go back to my institute. But another person who will take great objection to this will firstly talk to the subordinates, talk to the seniors and they then take necessary action as it deems fit. Necessary action as it deems fit. That is duty. You are not supposed to be inactive. From inaction to action. Do your duty. And this is very important in your life also. Suppose you, are, you say you are preparing for civil services. And you sleep for 10 hours. For 2 hours you are eating. 4 hours watching Netflix. 16 hours gone. In the rest 8 hours, there are some other things. Hardly you are studying for 2 hours. Hardly 2 hours you are studying. And say that I am preparing for civil services. When I say study, it involves your classes as well. Because you are learning a lot as far as classes are concerned. So, is it being dutiful? The answer is no. From inaction to action. And while you are doing your duty, you should be, while doing your duty, see one thing, Lord Krishna, Krishna Vasudev and the Bhagavad Gita is the greatest source of preaching and inspiration. What it teaches is not only ethical, moral, but practical as well. While doing your duty, you have to be You have to do this, Nishkam Karma, as we say in Hindi. Nishkam Karma. Do the duty for the sake of the duty. That is, it is your duty, you are doing it. At every stage, people have their own duty, which can also be called Dharma. You are having a duty. What is your duty right now? You are preparing for civil services. Your duty is to prepare for civil services sincerely, in the right direction, under the right coach. That is your duty. Do your duty, but 
there are people who are, have who have just started preparing i know many aspirants who just started preparing day in day out watching what is happening happening in the lbs training every body who passed the exam and went there for the foundation training is putting up pictures on instagram they are watching all this day in day out and then imagining that this is the life there earlier the government of india used to provide that red bacon on your car there used to be red bacon which they have removed red bacon removed people used to think about this lal bakti while preparing the red bacon lal bakti was continuously moving in their head that is not nishkam karma you are too much fixated and focused about the output that your action will become inefficient inefficiency will be there if you think too much i i interact with so many students who say right now i am planning they are planning since last 6 months how to study what to study take action start studying change your behavior as you see that it is not going in the right direction change it but if you don't take any action keep on planning at the end of the day you may not become a civil servant neither will you become a planner your plans will fail if it is not supported by action duty action is the core and when you are doing your action just enjoy the process the process here is civil services preparation you completely immerse yourself in the preparation not thinking about the output the result at all there are many people who are not bothered about the result i have seen many people they wrote the examination of 2014 they wrote the exam of 2011 after that these people started preparing for 2015 thinking i don't know what will happen they start preparing for 2012 once they got the written result even then they appeared for the interview but still kept on preparing they they thought that they may get good rank these people got uh, in top 50 these were in top 100 i am giving you practical real life example true example not making anything imaginary here they are so focused in their preparation they forgot about result and when you immerse yourself in the preparation completely without thinking about the result you get in most of the cases you get through it so bhagavad gita teaches you the value of being dutiful doing your duty for the sake of the duty the value of being focused on the duty without thinking about the consequences output or focusing or fixated psychologically also if you look at it from that perspective you will realize that if you are fixated about something your energy is drained if you keep on thinking about a particular thing your energy is drained and if you keep yourself free if you keep keep that energy which drives you free if it is not fixated then you will have a better performance this is the essence of the bhagavad gita be dutiful and then do your duty without thinking about the output nishkam kar essence is this which is important for us the gita gives lots of other lessons what is important for us we have chosen for ourselves the value which we can imbibe in ourselves then we move to another important lesson which we can learn from one of the biggest sources of inspiration as far as values are concerned is lord buddha buddhism 
Lord Buddha was a common man as you know living in the palace enjoying life comforts one day thought that rather than being behind these four walls the better idea is to go out and see so he went on his chariot to have a stroll of the kingdom there he realized that there are lots of sorrows in life that moved his inner conscience and he walked out of the comforts of life to gain wisdom this transformation from a common man siddhartha to lord buddha obviously the journey was quite complex full of difficulties but through that he learned a lots of lessons and he was endowed with the title of bhagwan buddha lord buddha because he got wisdom lord buddha is the only among his contemporaries jainism was there buddhism was there other religion were also prevalent but lord buddha is the only one who finds a place when we talk about avatars and what does lord buddha teach you which can be again the teachings of buddha is quite vast voluminous but what we can gain filter out for our purpose is three things the path of non violence non violence not being violent now as i told you it these things have practical implications i'll give you an example suppose you are placed as an sp of a district case study sp of a district because of some uh, religious procession the communal rights broke out at a place you are informed by the intelligence people that the communal rights are going on local intelligence units also inform you you along with your team well prepared to tackle the rights go there the thing is that you are a police officer the captain of your ship the captain of the district as far as police department is concerned what should be you have all the authority power to unleash violence upon the gathering but there is a protocol which is generally not followed by the police if you just take out a mic and announce that i want to talk to your leaders what is the issue please come out stop the violence right now come out we'll talk we'll solve your issue don't worry you along with yourself have a popular leader from the area whom you have called and brought to your office you have religious leaders also with you so that people get persuaded people understand that yes you will solve the issue they come out and talk to you the issue is resolved then suppose they don't listen to you then just to disperse the crowd you will use your bullets but plastic bullets rubber bullets then you will use your tear gas water cannon not resorting to violence as such after these even then the crowd does not stop then you go for your
लाठी चार्ज यूज ऑफ बेटन्स देन यू रिसोर्ट टू वट इज दट कॉल्ड लाठी चार्ज द सेम लाठी द सेम बेटन विच गांधी जी यूज फॉर हिज सॉल्ट सत्याग्रह विल बी यूज हेयर फॉर वायलेंस बिकॉज पीपल आर नॉट लिसनिंग यू कैन नॉट लीव दम लाइक दिस यू विल हैव टू रिसॉर्ट टू इट देन इफ इवन आफ्टर दैट यू रियलाइज दैट दीज पीपल आर क्वाइट वायल इन देर कैरिंग गन्स एंड ऑल एंड सम ऑफ योर पुलिस मैन आर ऑल्सो इंजर्ड देन यू गो फॉर firing but you are following the protocol here and because of which what will happen you will save yourself from a lots of problems later on if you have released the violence in the first step, step itself the human rights people may be after you there may be a case lost against you there may be loss of lots of innocent lives who were there in the crowd unfortunately they got stuck in the crowd and they lost their lives as is happening in the hamas palestine uh, uh palestine israel you see this war which is going on you should learn the ethical principles or moral values from all the happenings around what is happening there yesterday i saw that innocent children small children innocent children as young as 6 months 1 year old 2 year old 5 year old without having any offense in their mind these are really innocent children whosoever they might be whatever religion they are following they were killed in the attack whosoever attacked it whether israel did the bombing or the terrorist group of hamas did the bombing that is immaterial what is happening is innocent children lost their lives you see children losing their life is a very big deal great deal as far as humanism humanity is concerned suppose in the same crowd which gathered for communal violence some children would have been there and they lost their lives how as a sp you will be able to justify your deeds if you find these children dying there you know ashok great king ashoka he was on the path of war fighting so many wars and winning every war he wanted to expand his empire and he had one of the greatest expansion of empires but during kalinga war what happened during kalinga war he saw a child from the kingdom which was attacked by ashoka's army a small child wounded when ashoka went to offer him water he ran away a wounded child a small child hardly 5 6 years old he ran away although he was wounded crying completely drenched in the blood he did not take water from ashoka this brought the inner conscience of ashoka to the front so children dying children being subjected to any kind of violence as you see what happens in indian families now people have realized that this is wrong the parents even if the child is small to discipline them they used to hit them that's a very bad practice ashoka changed his approach towards life completely and he accepted buddhism does non violence have relevance the answer is absolutely yes in today's life it is it has violence the answer is yes 
so many people becoming violent at very at the drop of a hat everybody is violent you should have power authority yes but don't preach violence don't do violence till the moment you realize that now it is enough now i will have to take care of it art of war sunzu the greatest warriors will avoid war till the last minute because they know the consequences of war now non violence is one thing lord buddha taught and that is absolutely correct which was taught by gandhi ji also we'll see after that what lord buddha taught through the message of buddhism which is of importance to us is having the middle path middle path or golden mean what does it mean in the context in which it was taught is you should not stock your money or should not be involved in the pleasures of life too much now we are supposed to live a life in society we cannot become hermits hermits who are who have left the societal tenets and they have gone to forest gone and uh, they have renounced the common life they have rejected the common life they have, uh, we cannot become hermits then there are people who are hedonist who are the hedonist people criminal people on those who are doing this are also criminals hedonist people they do they will stockpile money huge amount of money they are after lust day in day out they are after violence too much of it what should be your approach your approach should be golden mean because it is not that you should not give yourself good food you should not eat good food you should not enjoy the pleasures and luxuries of life you are yes you you have all the rights to do so but don't do it too much if you apply it for your exam also those who are reading 16 hours 18 hours it's not possible but there are people who are saying i am studying for 12 hours see if you are studying for 12 hours the thing is that are you able to digest whatever you have studied the answer is no are you keeping your mind fertile enough to gather information which is around you are you becoming observant the answer is no and there is there are people who are studying only for 2 hours both these are bad practices you have to find a golden mean and this golden mean mind it is different for different people this golden mean was given by aristotle again the name is not important who gave it or not you have to understand the essence of it middle path given by lord buddha aristotle gave golden mean both of them are talking about the same thing that you should not do anything to such extent that it becomes uncomfortable for your life for living a peaceful happy life this is the meaning of it following the middle path you as a civil servant district magistrate again people are coming to you to get they are saying that our names in aadhar card are wrongly printed many of them are coming to you one approach is that you solve each and everybody's concern second approach is reject them completely third approach through the golden mean you will see okay there are so many cases is there something fishy about it 
rather than having a good faith about the citizens who are coming to your door is there something wrong what is happening you appoint a person to get gather all the facts behind it he informs you that few people are genuinely concerned few of them there is a mistake in their aadhar card there are many other people who are not the legal citizens of this country they are coming from bangladesh and various other places and living here so there is no need to correct their aadhar card what are you doing here you are doing justice with the just people and punishing those who are not doing the legal things so you are again doing the taking the middle path golden mean then what buddhism teaches us the third value is compassion now i'll give you a practical example compassion you are uh, suppose somebody is placed as asp in uh, central district of new delhi that is which covers rajendra nagar there are so many aspirants came to you let's see uh, so many aspirants have got the dog bites which is the case there dog bites when they were going to library they got bitten by the dogs who were roaming around here and there the street dogs you talk to the animal welfare department one of the wing is involved in this who just uh, catch the street dogs and put them outside the periphery of the urban area you are so aggressive so worried that you tell them that to catch each and every street dog do whatever unleash violence break their legs and throw them out one approach the second approach you say these are also animals they don't know they don't have that understanding of, yes dog bite is a major issue the dog should be sterilized dog should be injected vaccinated and in the periphery where dog bites are taking place we have to ensure that the street dogs who are creating problem should be removed but not in this violent manner in the first approach what will happen the animal rights people when you when your team goes to catch the dogs the animal rights those who from the local citizens themselves they and those people who are pro animal rights they will gather there protest against you report against you there will be lots of hue and cry and nothing will come out of it no outcome no output in the second case you are doing things but peacefully because you know what is there behind it which is guiding you towards it compassion the value of compassion because of the value of compassion you have been able to do this you are not only empathetic towards the needs of the people but animals as well did it solve your problem or not the answer is yes these values are not impractical they are practical values believe me so we have covered bhagavad gita lord buddha now we'll cover gandhi and approach gandhi ji gandhi ji was so powerful in his era that even the great thinkers and scientists had to say that the coming generations will find it 
really unbelievable that a person like gandhi walked on the earth the stature of gandhi was so high because again gandhi ji's approach although now people are unnecessarily trying to bring his stature down but he has practical implications one is your uh, we have already talked about truth truthful being truthful has immense value if you speak truth the people who are criticizing you are actually the defaulters are the fraud ones themselves so you need not worry about that after speaking the truth whosoever is supporting you are your real brethren if you speak truth you don't have to justify anything if you lie to justify that lie you'll have to speak another 100 lies you get my point truth follow the path of truth as in in your private conduct this is very important in your public conduct as a civil servant especially if you don't bring out the truth then you are doing disservice to your duty disservice to the nation to the society why how let's take the case of divya madal although she was transferred she should not have been aggressive on camera against the department people because they were also doing their duty but she did a great job she brought out the truth uncovered the truth suppose you are a editor in chief of a press bureau times of india editor in chief one there are two editors sitting in front of your journalist one journalist says it is raining outside you will say yes another journalist says no it's not raining outside you will say yes that is not the approach of a leader your duty is to see outside the window and whether it is raining or not and then finally correct one of them this is truth you see what is the truth when indira gandhi was prime minister one of the ias officers who was placed in his team to give him uh, give her uh, secretarial assistance reported late one day so indira gandhi had a habit of like rajiv gandhi as well to speak to their officers directly she asked him what is the issue he told my wife is not well she is pregnant now uh, indira gandhi talked to one of his secretary one of her secretaries and uh, told to uncover the truth what is the truth behind the secretary did all the investigation and he said yes ma'am he is correct he, his wife is pregnant and because of which indira gandhi this see this is the essence of a leader indira gandhi she uh, visited his home prime minister visited his home and uh, brought with herself one of the best doctors gynecologist to support his wife also gave her lots of gifts that is the essence of a leader to uncover the truth and be humble and empathetic towards your teammates because these people are not your subordinates not your servants these are your colleagues truth 
has essence in your private life, in your public conduct, in different contexts. Then non-violence is again taught by Gandhiji, which we have already seen the essence as taught by Lord Buddha also, non-violence has its essence. And I am giving you the practical implications, not giving the sermonization of non-violence, keep giving you speeches. No, practical implication. It is practical. We are not talking any philosophy. Be a practical person. Then comes your devoting what Gandhiji told is devote your life in the service of people. Same thing, almost similar things were told by Mother Teresa also. But Gandhiji says it in a different context. Devote your life for what? Service, in the service of people. Now you see, non-violence we have already understood. What happens if you devote your life in the service of people? Huge rewards. Huge rewards. Let me tell you. How? You will be at peace with yourself. People, many of my batchmates who passed out from IIT joined MNC. I also had the opportunity. I did some job for quite some time then left it. They are still there. After 10, 11, 15 years of their job there, now they are clueless what we are doing. Because as far as having money is concerned, there are various ways of earning it. As far as having comforts of life are concerned, there are various ways of doing it. But what is your goal? End goal, as I told you, if you have a vision in life, if you have a great vision in life that at least one district I will transform. India has got so many problems, poverty, unemployment, illiteracy, superstition and nowadays polarization in the society. Unverified facts being spilled out on the social media. Lots of show off. People running after Hedonism, I will correct one of these problems. I as a leader of the country will correct this problem. In my capacity, then it will propel you, drive you towards your vision. If you devote yourself towards the service of people, in the service of people, you know what is your designation going to be public people, then servant. If you have that attitude of serving then only you will succeed if you have that humility to serve that humility is required because if you are devoted driven by this service motive you will be working for public interest What is happening with most of the people? Those who are my batchmates, those who have been in the service, but they were not driven by any motive to serve people. Now they have, see, one day you will enjoy your office, one day you will enjoy all the subordinates, bungalow, vehicle, whatever is provided to you. For a year you may enjoy, for five years you may enjoy. But after that what? What is driving you? What is your driving force? There has to be some other thing. If you have that service motive in your mind, you will be driven throughout the life and your life will become a lesson for others. Your name will be googled. People will google your name. People will study about you. Your name will be imprinted in books. People will know, okay, this person was also there. Otherwise, we all, uh, we are born, we live and finally we die. Nobody will bother about us. Everybody will die. 
and after that nothing few days people will cry some people will cry some others don't even cry they are worried about what all is there in the food on teruvi how many puris will be provided how many sweets will be there people are so self centered so if you have to make your life impactful leave it for public interest leave it for service and that service can be done in any capacity you can serve in form of civil servant you can serve in ngos you can serve as a teacher the teacher is also doing the service or not teacher is not so so uh, cheap and easy thing which many people have made them many coaching institutes they are doing great disservice towards the students the aspirants making their life help and then enjoying the so sadist they are i'll tell you the reality many coaching institutes and teachers they are designed like this that they will ensure that you fail and keep on writing the exam again and again it helps in their business teachers sermonize something in the class and in their conduct in life they are so ill intentioned fill them out this is their approach so service is your motive you will go far in life it has practical implications few values you will you will learn and try to imbibe them then we have one of the greatest leaders about whom we talked earlier also nelson mandela nelson mandela who fought against apartheid in africa people were being discriminated exterminated thrown out of their house in africa based on the color so nelson mandela fought against these discriminatory practices but in a different manner his basic gospel was that people are not born violent people are not born to hate people are innately intrinsically driven to love compassion is their basic nature compassion love is their basic nature so if they can be trained to hate they can be trained to have compassion they can be trained to love each other a small child innocent child whatever the color of the child is fair unfair dark whatsoever brown you will in the first have a first look at the child unless you are a, a cruel person from inside you will like the child in the first go you will like the puppies dogs puppies also leave aside human beings children we are not born to hate neither do children have anything in their mind blank innocent they smile to everyone social smiling so nelson mandela had this approach this has great relevance in today's society polarized society everybody is hating each other it has been the case since ages during the time of gandhi also 
people were ready to hate but he taught everyone to follow the path of non violence in today's times when you are at the position of leadership you as a district magistrate or you as an sp suppose you are superintendent of police or commissioner of police delhi you tell your uh, subordinates as i was having conversation with one of the officers serving in delhi he told me that there is a direct order from cp commissioner of police earlier commissioner of police when mr alok verma was commissioner he told each and every policeman that see you go there are people around the colleges there are parks and other places where the couples are sitting the approach of many of the police department people in various states including up it was happening earlier was that they used to harass them commissioner police delhi said that the genuine people who are sitting there should not be harassed they are not doing anything criminal they are not spreading any obscenity not doing anything which is disturbing the public order in the duty no where it has been written that commissioner of police should have done this delhi cp alok verma should have done this but he was giving this lesson to policemen to approach these people softly talk to them in the right man many times i see the traffic people who stop the car and ask for the papers there are people who are very well behaved please show the papers they will see the papers are genuine and all then they will let you go there are other people who are full of that hate and stress now this discipline will come in the whole department if the person at the top gives a clear direction and warning also that you should behave softly in a professional manner you are in uniform you have to behave then nothing like this will happen if you are moved by these genuine human values genuine human values then many of the problems you are diverting averting and doing great service for the whole country for the whole society try to imbibe these and believe me the path is very difficult no it's not so easy you will always be thinking that i should use the force especially when you have the power and the great saying is that anybody can any human being can go through the adversities every human being has the capacity to go through the adversities if you have to check the character of a person give him power and authority and here also you get a great lesson from lord krishna he had the power to kill someone who was hurling so many abuses on him but he waited till his 100th abuse then only went for the killing as per the mythology you have the authority you can do the destruction but you will wait give peace a chance driven with the value of compassion kiran bedi brought lots of reforms in tihar tihar is home to hardcore criminals she was of the belief that nobody is born criminal people become criminal because of their circumstances of life and they can be reformed 
through genuine concerns. What she did? She introduced yoga, meditation, She told them, you can do handcrafts, handcrafting, handmade things which many of these jail inmates make and they are very beautiful. If you have the opportunity, had the opportunity to had a look at the, these uh, items created by them, many of them got reformed. Especially in the countries like India, you know, there was a person who was languishing in jail for 25 years for having stolen 125 rupees. Such a small amount. And after so many years, it was realized that he has not stolen this, actually, after 25 years of this. person was languishing in jail. In a country like ours, wherever there is an opportunity to become compassionate, to show empathy, you should follow that path. Because already the life is very difficult for many people, especially towards the poor downtrodden to the last and the least. The person Who is at the last from where you are watching? The person who hasn't got any resources and the least. Last and the least. The smallest of the person, the weakest of the person deserves the highest form of humanistic concern. Then, we will go to one of the greatest leaders in the history of America, Abraham Lincoln. He was known for Being honest, integrity, nobody can dispute the relevance of honesty and integrity, especially when you are in the public service. You are honest. You have a good image of a public servant, you are honest in your private conduct, in private ethical conduct you are honest, you will gain trust and loyalty of your, in your intimate and close relationships. You have integrity, whatever is there inside, whatever you preach, you are following that path, walk the talk, you will become the best civil servant in this world. Not only that, you will be efficient, because then you gain lots of support from people, you have that integrity, then there is no value confusion, you can sleep well at night. Then one thing he was known for, eloquence, whatever is there, there are very very less people are there who are courageous enough to bring the truth to the table. And the leaders who want to make a change and civil servants have to be leaders. They must bring the truth to the table and they should have the capacity to bring it to the fore in such a manner that people are persuaded. Honesty, integrity and eloquence taught by Abraham Lincoln. If you are eloquent, suppose as I told you, you are the SP of a district or a trainee SP, ASP. There you find that lots of malpractices, misgovernance, malgovernance is being there in the police department. If you are an eloquent person, you will not only bring the facts, you will bring the facts in such a manner that people get impressed. People understand that yes, there is a genuine concern. 
एज ए टोल यू सिर्फ हंगामा खड़ा करना मेरा मकसद नहीं दैट शुड नॉट बी योर अप्रोच यू हैव टू ब्रिंग इट टू एंश्योर दैट देर हैज टू बी चेंज बी अ चेंज मेकर दैट विल बी सर्व ओनली थ्रू इलोक्वेंस then 